Thanks very much for joining everyone. Um, we are here to talk about trading in Asia and in particular bridging the connectivity gap. I'm very pleased to have with me today um, Alex Zhang, the Senior Manager for International Department uh, Nanhua Futures, and Matthew Lampierre, the Head of Asia, Middle East and UK for BSO. Today we're going to be talking about how we can use both companies to make sure that uh, we can give you best practices with regards to trading in Asia um, and all the intricacies that come with that, because obviously Asia is a very large market, which is an incredibly important market, especially with so many hubs being in Asia, whether it's Singapore, whether it's Hong Kong, whether it's within China itself. And um, sometimes those can be quite complex. So we take the knowledge from Nanhua Futures and the knowledge from uh, BSO, and we support companies to be able to trade. Um, and the whole point of this webinar is to give you a snapshot of the best practices that can support you in being successful in those markets. Without further ado, you're not here to listen to me. And so I'm going to be handing over to Alex to take us through how Nanha Futures can support your business. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a great honor to have uh, BSO invited me uh, representing Nanha Futures. Uh, so we're co-hosting this uh, fabulous event to introduce the uh, connectivity to, to the connectivity gap uh, introduction. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? Okay, so uh, Number Futures established in 1996 and is a global service platform of financial derivatives at the, as the first China Asia listed futures company. So we have over 2 billion registered capital with around 1,000 employees all around the world. And uh, branches in also in five different countries as you can probably um, see in the slides right here. So uh, we have our um, uh, UK branch located in London and our um, Chicago branch and also Hong Kong and Singapore um, outside of mainland China. Um, so our business scope includes commodity and financial futures brokerage, futures investment consulting, asset management services, and security, securities investment fund and so on. Um, move, next slide, please. Okay, so this is a uh, general picture of how uh, overseas investors can participate into Chinese uh, futures trading market. And also uh, some of them are securities and uh, uh, private fund as well. So on the top, we can see as overseas investors, they can participate in trading um, Chinese and national varieties like INE, crude oil, TSR20, low silver fuel oil, bonded copper, and crude oil options. Contracts like this are um, tradable for overseas investors if they participate into the market via a qualified overseas intermediary. And the trades will go through now what futures, then the trades go through next step to the futures exchanges in China. And uh, for the bottom part, that's the qualified foreign institution investors. That's what we also call the QFI and RQFI. And that's the another, another path you can uh, be if you are a qualified uh, institution investor. And with being that, you have a uh, wider scope to trade into the Chinese commodity market, um, not only for those uh, restricted um, contract listed above, but also you can have stock index futures, CSR 300 stock index options, but only for hedging purposes. Um, contracts like this are also viable for QFI and RQFI investors as well. Um, next slides, please. Actually, Alex, sorry, just oh, yeah. maybe you're going to talk about it now, but um, I was really interested in hearing more about the commodities exchanges in China. I mean, clearly, oh, sure, that's, like, that's uh, a pretty good question. So, yeah, uh, that's an also, it's also shown on this page as well on the uh, left side. So, uh, there are currently in a total of six futures exchange here right now in mainland China, which are Dalin Commodity Exchange, Zhenzhou Commodity Exchange, Shanghai Futures Exchange and uh, International Energy Exchange, China Financial Futures Exchange, and also the very newly established 
Guangzhou Futures Exchange. However, um, due to uh, its unique characteristic of uh, China Financial Futures uh, Exchange and uh, the newly established Guangzhou Futures Exchange, these two will not be uh, mostly mentioned during today's webinar, but the rest are what we'll, we'll, we'll be covering mostly today. Hope that um, solves your question, Matthew. Thank you. Okay, so uh, going forward, on these slides, we're seeing the Nanwa Trading Network, network resources here. So um, right in the middle, which are showing three major data hubs, uh, from its top to bottom are Jingqiao IDC, which locates in Shanghai. And this was originally used to trade the Shanghai Security Exchange. And right in the middle, that's the Zhangjiang IDC, which locates also in Shanghai, but now, uh, and now it's the major polo center if you want to trade um, Sheffi, that's, uh, I mentioned the uh, Shanghai Futures Exchange. That's the major hub if you wanted to trade um, Sheffi and IND and also CFX, although it's not um, currently viable for um, overseas investors right now. Uh, and also on the very uh, bottom part, it's the Hangzhou Bingjiang IDC. It's the closest to our Nanhua headquarters here in Hangzhou. And it could also talk to other IDCs like the major Shanghai Zhangjian one right in the middle. So um, then in the middle one, oh, can we go? Yes, thank you. Um, so the Zhangjian Center connects to almost every other major hubs via multiple dedicated lines like CMU Chicago, which I recall is should locate in a suburban area, Aurora. So, and also um, Hong Kong IDC, and uh, which spreads to, you can see at the right bottom, which spreads to um, Hong Kong Exchange and SGX as well. While the, um, well, except the ones in Shanghai and Hangzhou, each exchange has their own neighborhoodly data center. For example, Dalian High Tech Data Center, um, it's on the uh, left side bottom. That's the, that's, the, that's the data center for DCE, Dalian Commodity Exchange. And the Zhengzhou Isani IDC, that's the um, IDC hub for ZCE. So theoretically speaking, that every exchange listed here is able to talk with each other and uh, data-wise, I mean, but either um, by either simply, uh, by either simply market data forwarding or broadcasting in these two ways. So um, all in all, clients could choose either to merge into this whole picture, but with such limited bandwidth uh, and uh, speed as well. So uh, you can see on the, on the diagram, there are like, um, for example here, uh, hope you can see it. So uh, 10 megabyte with 145.42 uh, millisecond of latency round trip between uh, Zhangjiang IDC and Chicago CME right now, uh, it's showing the picture. So if this fits your uh, needs, when clients are trading. Um, but if not, then a, you can turn into a professional dedicated line provider like BSO here. So I think Matthew will cover that uh, mostly on his part. Uh, also, that would be probably with more bandwidth and lower latency here. And uh, we can move on to the next slides, please. So on these slides, that's where we start with the co-location service. So in case you wonder, why would clients need to put their own server into an exchange server room? So mostly because with the trading trends of recent years, um, manual trading are being gradually replaced by algor algorithm trading or high frequency trading. So which these two are heavily relies on a stable, fast and reliable biome to run the uh, trading strategies and the co-location. Um, lower the physical distance and could basically solve all of the concerns set above. So as you can see here, uh, it's correlated with what we've been talking about. So in general, on the uh, left, top, left top bottom, uh, left top side, uh, for Sheffy and INE, Zhangjiang server room with its phase 
two, three, and four you can choose from because some of them are already in full capacity. So it really depends on the real, situ uh, real situation here. And the viable trading system will be for all mainstream Chinese system like CDP sub C and uh, uh, NHTD, uh, Shenli REM, EDA server, and also eSunny. So these two, th these are the like the most supported in uh, Zhangjiang server room if you're uh, up to trade um, Shefi and INE. And for uh, DCE, for Dalian, that, as I said, the Dalian high-tech server room, which supports Shenli REM and NHTD, these for uh, the Dalian trading. And also for ZCE, Zhengzhou, they have two server rooms for you to choose from. So one is Zhengzhou mini server room, and another is ZCE tech center server room, which only supports eSunny, eSunny the trading system. Um, oh, I think the eSunny have already upgraded with its uh, eSunny v10, so we might probably want to change that uh, instead of mini eSunny, but uh, it's the same, there's the same idea behind this. And uh, for the pros listed uh, here, it's just uh, like how we, how we uh, provide the uh, service to the clients with uh, uh, because each client server will match each, each exchange accordingly. And then we will manage to provide a multiple high-speed trading system with uh, low latency equipment, which I should be covering in the next couple of slides. Um, yeah, uh, we can move on to the next slides, please. Okay, so this is a server room and also the equipment we, uh, we usually provide to the clients. So on the left side, this is just a sample of showing how the co-location server room connects with the switch, which is right in the middle, and goes and then goes to the right side, right hand side as the trading system I listed. Also, it looks like a uh, racks, but it's actually the trading system. So it, it actually diverts into two ways. So trade flow on the top and the market data transmission uh, is also uh, highlighted as red, uh, listed in, 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 at the bottom. Um, so, and, and on the right, that's the equipment and the server specs. So the, the top one is the uh, Metamic layer one switch that we've been providing, which only cost four nanoseconds to travel internally. And the other one uh, at the bottom is the ICC machine with its Gen I core i9 for overclocking purposes only. So if you are a really you know, latency sensitive clients looking for um, like high frequency solutions, uh, these are the you know, options we should be offering to these kind of clients. Um, next slide, please. And then we move on to the trading platforms because I think I've been um, covering some of that in the in the previous slides. So um, internationally speaking, we support all the mainstream trading platforms such as TT, CQG, Isani, Bloomberg, and the NHTD I put here is our um, self-developed trading platform uh, used for not only the domestic traders, but also suitable for overseas investors if you uh, are uh, able to develop these, uh, you know, um, algorithm accordingly on the NHTD system. So basically the trading platform are, I think the, these could cover uh, most of the client's needs uh, here. So if you are we're very familiar with trading TT, you are a, you know, a old TT user and you can always uh, come to us and choosing using TTS still. So uh, here at the bottom with the five uh, characteristic are the uh, introductions of our NHTD system actually. So in general, uh, so uh, it, the NHTD system is approved by the exchange to trade all futures and options contract. And it runs in full RAM with an internal latency less than one microsecond. So, and it also comes with a risk control and uh, independent risk control front end with a simple API, very easy for clients to develop. And it also have high capacity and a stable connection as well. Um, next slides, please. 
Uh, this is just a, uh, a test log we did on 2019 on the NHTD um, system that could uh, that we've been using. So uh, it's a uh, penetration test for the system. Uh, so the general uh, the aggr aggregated count for uh, trade is about four to five thousand, and the average latency here we can see it's highlighted uh, for both of the charts. So the uh, average latency was uh, six point six eight microsecond, and the the bottom one is six point nine one microsecond as well. So that's the, just a uh, general. Uh, self-developed high ultra high speed trading solution we usually provide to clients if they're really interested in this. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, above that's uh, all my content of sharing uh, now as part. So in general, uh, last but not least, so we are a pretty experienced in global market and provide uh, advices for overseas brokers from exchange filing to participate in transactions. So together with BSO here, so basically I think we are, um, I would say really similar type of service providers with such intention of, you know, being innovating en enough and that we can, together we can also give clients the ideal solution of cross-market connectivity. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Oh, that's a fascinating overview to the um, Chinese market. Um, so I think Virginia's uh, come on as well. And thank you very much, Alex. And just to remind everyone, we will be having a Q&A at the end. So if you've got any questions for Alex, please keep them until the end and we will make sure we've got enough time to answer them all. Um, but I'll be handing over to Matthew to take us through how BSO can help you with trading in Asia. Thank you. And again, thank, thanks, Alex. I, I, I learned a lot there, particularly about all the different Chinese exchanges. I've got loads of questions, but we'll maybe have to get them offline. Um, but um, I've, I've had a look at uh, who's joined the bridge, and there's a few people that may not be too familiar with BSO. So I wanted to give just a couple of minutes on, uh, on who BSO are, and uh, as Virginia said, how we can help you access the, uh, the, the markets all across the Asia region. So um, BSO are a privately owned um, global telecoms operator. Um, we run in uh, 240 plus points of presence around the world. And so what we do is we have a, uh, a number of different technologies that we use to link these together. So we have everything from a millimeter and microwave to global low latency fiber and, and secondary tertiary fiber routes to allow us to connect you to pretty much any exchange that you want to connect to, <coughs> particularly across the Asia region. Um, we were founded in uh, 2004 and our, our basis for being really is to support uh, clients that transmit uh, and thrive on the use of mission critical data. So what we tend to do is sit down with our clients, look at what data centers you're using, look at which exchanges you're trading and see what technology we can offer to either improve that or open up new markets, give better commercial terms, give better latencies, give better security, stability, resilience, etc. cetera. So, um, so that's really what we do. Um, as well as that, we are linked into over 80 now um, cloud on-ramps because cloud is becoming so much more important in the uh, financial services world. And we can connect into AWS, Azure, Google, um, et cetera. Um, and we can offer um, the cloud on-ramps linked in with our global low latency network. So as well as having access to all the different cloud services, you can link them together using the power of the BSO global network, which is a very unique proposition in the market. And particularly for the digital asset world, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, I appreciate that's not so relevant for those listening in China, um, but for those around the rest of the world, um, very, very important these days. Um, so uh, could we move on to the next slide, please? So a few statistics from us here. Um, as I said, we're in over 240 points of presence. So in Hong Kong, for example, we're in five or six data centers. Same as Singapore, 
same as Sydney. We're in China, um, Taiwan, uh, Thailand, etc. Um, we have access to over 80 global stock exchange. I think that's actually um, a little bit more than that. And, and we pride ourselves on, uh, on near 100% availability. So four to five nines. Um, and we do that by having multiple routes between all the different exchanges and data centers. So if one fails, then another one can, uh, can take over. And um, we also offer co-location services. So Alex gave a, a really good example there of the use of Metamaco switches and how they sit within the servers um, to offer uh, co-location services across China. Um, we can offer that um, in a variety of data centers globally. So within exchange data centers, Equinix, um, and, and other data centers such as Interaction, um, we can offer that to give you um, unrivaled um, latency to be close to the matching engine and then using our network to, um, to connect out to, to other exchanges globally. And we have 11 offices, so we are a global business. Um, in Asia, we have offices in Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, I myself am based in London. I've only been here for about a year. Um, I had nearly 20 years living in Asia, um, Thailand, Japan, and latterly Hong Kong. Um, and uh, you know, it's, Asia is very close to my heart and uh, I have a lot of experience of dealing with the different exchanges over there. Um, <clears throat> can I have the next slide, please? So our global network, I mean, we have extensive network, as you can see. We offer the lowest latency routes between, say, Shanghai and CME. As Alex mentioned earlier, um, we have some great routes between um, UK and the US and Asia Pacific. Um, pretty unrivaled in our network coverage and um, latency there. So um, if you are looking to get into the Asian markets, um, that's really where we are our strongest. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, I'll leave this slide up here for a second, but what we're seeing, obviously, is, is the main exchanges of Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, Australia, um, continuing to drive growth across the region. Um, I know the markets have been down in the last week or so, but over the last sort of 10 to, to 20 years, markets have been very, very strong um, across the region, as have the, the currencies. What we are now seeing is a lot more interest in some of the growth areas. So Stock Exchange of Thailand, for example, um, there's a lot more going on there um, in Vietnam, uh, India, Dubai, um, and um, you know the continuous trading in Taiwan, uh, must have been a couple of years ago now, that made a big change to the market over in, in Taiwan, and we saw a lot of growth with people wanting to take advantage of the changes going on there. Um, I think the, um, the Asian markets are quite forward thinking. So you've got ASX with their um, digital ledger um, uh, program to replace the, the chess platform. Um, Hong Kong also doing a, a blockchain based um, post trade service. So uh, there's a lot of um, interesting technology going on across Asia Pacific. And on the FX um, vertical, you've really seen Singapore and the Monetary Authority of Singapore um, create Singapore as a global FX hub now. There's been a lot of changes in FX uh, over the last few months in Asia with NEX moving their servers to um, London and uh, New York only. So um, the change in Tokyo there, we're still seeing a lot of requirements for um, for Tokyo, for the FX markets, but we're seeing a lot of growth in Singapore. I know the, uh, the, the liquidity is not the same as the rest of the world there yet, but it's growing on a pretty regular basis. So um, again, if any of you are trading FX and you're looking to get better access to Singapore, Tokyo, Hong Kong, New York, um, do give us a call because um, we have without doubt, the best connectivity between those locations. Um, and that's been a very important uh, growth market. Um, and again, just to emphasize the, the emerge, I, I can't really say emerging markets with Thailand and, and India, because they're huge markets. And you know, the, Thailand is only just behind 
Singapore in market cap, for example, I think people don't realize what a huge market that is. Um, great trading opportunities there, uh, as well as South Africa. Again, not in Asia, but um, some great opportunities for trading there and great growth that we've seen over the last few months. And could I have the next slide, please? Um, something I mentioned earlier, uh, I, again, I will stress not relevant for those in China and my apologies for, for spending a couple of minutes on this, but we have seen a huge increase in take up for people trading digital assets and cryptos over the last two years. Um, we, we were asked from existing clients to actually build our network out into the crypto exchanges because they're using us to trade um, uh, the traditional exchanges, be they FX, equities, derivatives, et cetera, um, and asked, you know, can you actually get us to some of these new crypto exchanges um, a couple of years ago? So we extended our network into all the public clouds, um, as, I've, as I've mentioned earlier, and we can now connect to over 90% of the world's um, cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, the, the interesting thing here is that these markets were really built for the um, for the retail investor. So you and me with our Coinbase or, or other app on our phone, um, you know, investing in, in Bitcoins and, and other new um, technologies. But this, this has really changed over the last couple of years with the institutions moving in. And uh, institutions want institutional grade infrastructure. They don't really want a retail market um, set up like we have um, in the past. So um, we're working very closely with a number of exchanges. Um, we also work closely with um, FIX, for example, who are offering um, industry grade uh, APIs out to the um, crypto uh, exchanges, um, along with REST and, and Elwood. Um, and what we do is, is we take the uh, traffic out of the exchange into our low latency network and we transfer it across to um, other exchanges where there are significant arbitrage opportunities. Um, we are seeing a lot of uh, trading between Dublin, London, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Singapore, Ashburn, um, San Jose and other locations. Um, also into Korea where there's Wu Exchange and a couple of others there which have some great uh, market caps. So um, there's a few logos there of people that we are working with um, at the moment. These are just some examples. But again, if you are trading um, cryptos or digital assets um, or thinking of doing that, um, we have a lot of experience now in this and there's not that many network providers offering that type of service. So um, please, again, give us a call and uh, we'll happily talk you through what we can offer you around the cryptocurrency markets. Um, could I have the next slide, please? Fantastic. So this is where some of the exchanges are located. As you can see, a very big uh, majority of them are in Asia Pacific. Um, OSL have actually just moved from Hong Kong to Singapore, so uh, we'll have to update our slide there. Um, but up in Tokyo, we have Binance, FTX, Huobi, Bitflyer, KuCoin, um, OKX and others in Hong Kong. Um, and then OSL are, as I said, in Singapore with Bybit. Um, uh, Equinix have actually just stopped their exchange as well, so um, we will have to update this slide. Um, and then clearly we link these back to the people in London and uh, Dublin, so we've got Elmax and Deribit and others listed there. Um, there's also quite an interesting one in Amsterdam called BTC Turk. Um, there's a lot of liquidity on there from the Turkish market. I, I was in Istanbul last week and I learned all about this. But with the um, Turkish retail investors, um, when they get their salaries, they're buying other currencies and particularly investing into um, the crypto market. And BTC Turk in Amsterdam has a huge pool of liquidity from, uh, from the Turkish retail market. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we're asked for uh, on a regular basis is the CME and ICE um, crypto futures feeds, uh, which we have available there. Um, and people are carrying those to um, other exchanges so that they can trade uh, using that market information globally. So uh, there's a lot going on in the crypto world at the moment. Um, next slide, please. 
Um, thank you. So look, that's, that's me finished um, as far as uh, slides are going. Um, and uh, we welcome any, uh, any questions from the floor or, uh, you know, please do send them in to us now and uh, we'll, uh, we'll answer as best we can. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much, Matthew. Um, really good overview there. And um, we do already have some questions that are coming in, but please guys, don't be shy. And if we don't have time to cover all the questions that get asked, uh, we will, of course, find a way of responding to you guys one-to-one -one, um, post-webinar. But I have a question in the chat right now. So it's a question for Alex. Does Manuel have a significant presence in the US? And is there increased usage, usage sorry, from US trading participants seeking to access Asia? Yeah, so that's a pretty good question. So um, US, so for the for a brief answer, yes, we do have a significant, a significant presence in the US. So we have our um, Chicago branch established in um, uh, establishing 2015. And uh, we got a full clearing membership of CME. So, and we actually have located in the CME building as well. Uh, and we are also uh, the only, uh, we can say like the pure, we, we, we can be the only pure um, Chinese futures um, FCM um, in Chicago because the only, the rest two are the um, Chinese banks have the clearing, uh, clearing membership and they, only occurring for their um, own funds. So we are the only um, Chinese FCM located in the US can um, open to the uh, retail, retail investors uh, also. So, uh, but for the um, uh, latter part, is there increased uh, usage from US to trading participants seeking to access Asia? Uh, the answer is for sure. We do get a lot of uh, um, increase from US, they wanted to, uh, they, they are interested in um, Chinese market mostly. We got, uh, you know, they are looking for um, Chinese market data and uh, they are really interested in um, Chinese index futures and also the government bonds. These are the most questions we got. And also some of them are um, really interested in trading the um, INE crude oil because, you know, with the uh, CME and the ICE brand, they get a really good opportunity across these markets. So, but uh, right now uh, we are still uh, exploring ways to, uh, you know, fully accept U.S. Um, trading participant to get into the Chinese uh, Chinese uh, trading market. But the the uh, possible viable way is for these trading clients if they have in an um, you know offshore vehicle. Um, you know, locating probably Cayman or BVI, and we can, uh, you know, as I presented in my slides, there is an QF and RQV uh, way. So that will be the, um, we can say the only possible way for US participant to trade in Chinese uh, varieties right now. Hope that um, answers your question. Thank you, Ryan Williams. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question this one uh, for Matthew. Which peers of exchange do people trade? Goodness. Um, yes, that's an interesting question. So Alex has just mentioned one of the main ones that we see, which is CME to um, Shanghai Futures for the for the oil contracts. Um, we see a lot of interest between CME and ASX. Um, and then uh, a lot of interest between Tokyo and the other regional markets, so Tokyo, Hong Kong, and, and Singapore, um, India and Dubai, uh, and India up to London are, are very, very key trading routes at the moment. Um, this is kind of the equities and derivatives world. Then you move into FX, where um, people are trading between London, Tokyo, Singapore, and New York. And then, as I said, in the uh, crypto world, um, most people seem to be hubbing out of Tokyo because of the um, liquidity that's within Tokyo and then connecting to OKX and Bybit and Deribit and other exchanges on a global basis from there. So there's a lot of different pairs of exchanges people are trading um, and we've got some great routes to, to help that. So um, it, it is interesting actually providing network in that you do get to see what pairs of exchanges people are trading. 
um, and how the different strategy is working. So um, yeah, do, do get in touch for any more information around that, whoever asked the question. Um, I have another question for Alex. So with regards to trading in China, um, some companies might find it challenging to understand the technicalities and how to move money in and out of China. Um, can you shed some light on the best practices around there? Okay. Um, so in terms of the money flow, I would say um, basically the fund that the clients deposit into the uh, broker's offshore bank account, uh, which could be US dollar or CMY, that's the only two options you got there. And then the broker will proceed the transfer uh, of these funds towards our, for example, as Nawa. So towards our client margin account, which is not only a SEG account, but also it's protected and regulated by the um, CFMMC, so that's the China Futures Margin Monitoring Center, so it's a um, regulator here in China, and vice versa for any withdrawal needed. The uh, side note here about uh, the uh, deposit and withdrawal is that you can uh, deposit and withdraw um, both in the uh, day session, but during the night session, you can deposit, but the fund will um, taken an actual effective on T plus one. So it happens on tomorrow, but you can not put in a uh, withdrawal request during the night session. So that's the uh, like the a bit information about getting money uh, in and out. But um, another, another thing is if you use a uh, US dollar, as I, as I mentioned, as the margin, there will be an extra 5% as a haircut. But if you choose to use the CMY, uh, you know, the pre exchange uh, CMY as your uh, trading currency, then um, you can not only get uh, the uh, trading interest upon that, but you will not get a, any percentage haircut on that. So, hope that solves your concern. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, I think Matthew, you can talk to this one. Are there any plans to expand your infrastructure by adding wireless long haul connection along with fiber? Um, we have uh, wireless, or I'll get shot for calling it wireless in BSO because we call it um, radio frequency, but um, yes, we have uh, radio frequency uh, in um, New York, uh, New Jersey, Chicago and Toronto already, and we are always looking for um, new uh, areas where we can deploy that technology um, and uh, help people you know, shave off some some milliseconds with that, um, as well as uh, other areas such as shortwave, um, which is uh, a very interesting technology now being used to transmit market data out of Chicago. So, um, yeah, again, do get in touch with us one on one. Tell us where you're looking for for RF or wireless services, and uh, we'd uh, we'd love to uh, to discuss those with you. Thank you very much. A question that. I believe both of you uh, will be covering. So the market in Asia is so diverse. How do Nanofar and BSO help deal with market fragmentation? Let's start with you, Alex. Um, I'm sorry, is this the uh, question mentioned in the chat? Um, it's on the slide here. So the market in Asia is very diverse. How does Nanofar and BSO help deal with market fragmentation? Oh, okay. Um, Matthew, do, do you want to cover that first? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do that first. So, so, the, so it's, it's a very interesting question, actually, and the exchanges across the region. So I'll let Alex talk about the ones within China. I'll talk about outside of China. Um, the, the ones across the region are very diverse. Um, there are different trading rules, different data centers, um, different liquidity, et cetera, across the region. And um, BSO can certainly help with that because we've been out there for a number of years. As I've mentioned, I personally have lived over there for, uh, for a number of years and we have a team of guys um, there at the moment in, in Hong Kong, Singapore and the Philippines. So we know the markets pretty well. So if you're over in Europe or the States and you're looking to trade more in, um, in Asia, then really BSO can, can help with that. Um, because we understand all the different local nuances um, between, say, um, how you work in, in Tokyo, how you connect into the exchanges there, where the data centers are, where they all are for Australia, for Hong Kong, Singapore, for, 
Thailand, etc. And we can really help set up your trading infrastructure across the region. Um, uh, we, we do operate network in and out of China, but because of um, local rules there, we don't actually provide co-location services or local network within China. Um, that's where Alex and, and Nanhua come in, and that's why it's so great to be here with them today, working with them. And I'll, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Alex cover some of the different markets in China, if that's okay. Um, yeah, so, so basically for uh, overseas uh, clients, if they wanted to actually uh, direct, market, direct market access into um, Chinese exchanges, Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's a no-go right now because as I shown in my slides, the uh, clients have to connect with our overseas uh, appointed overseas intermediaries. Uh, and then the overseas intermediaries will connect with us and then we will have the connection with the uh, Chinese, local, uh, uh, Chinese local exchange in different regions. So that does actually cause some latency because um, you know, Matthew uh, will be more uh, professional on this because there will be uh, actual more lines to connect but between different dots. So, but um, as I said, so that's also the uh, regulation concern here. So that's the um, only option we can give to the overseas investors right now. Thank you very much. And um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. I do apologize. Is there any low latency solution access to uh, Gyeongsu futures exchanges right now? Um, yeah, so uh, as I said, this is a very uh, brand new established exchange right now. So we, I think the only information we got about this exchange is first, it does accept um, overseas investors and they also establish their uh, listed products. But uh, we, that's, I think that's the only information we got for this exchange right now. So there are um, no, you know, data hubs or connect, uh, connectivity uh, details about this exchange are listed right now. So I think the only thing we can do for Guangzhou Futures Exchange right now is to, you know, keep an eye on it and probably uh, till next week or uh, somewhere in October, we can get more information about that. and. Uh, we can start from there. Right, thank you very much. Um, we had another question, but I think we've already covered that with regards to direct uh, market access to China exchanges. So thank you very much, Alex, for being efficient. Um, other than that, we have a question with regards to crypto. Oh, and another one. Um, how do you guys support businesses from a crypto perspective? So crypto can be slightly different to other ways of trading. How would we be able to support that? Um, yes, so uh, from, from our side, um, we can connect, as I said, said earlier, we can connect out to um, fairly well all of the global crypto exchanges now, certainly all of the top ones where the institutions are trading. We have access to about 90% of the global crypto exchanges at the moment. Um, what we tend to do with people is... Um, We'll, we'll listen to the exchanges that you're looking to trade. Um, we can set up a 14-day trial um, to allow you to uh, test your trading strategies and test how the infrastructure works because it is pretty different to the traditional markets, um, being that most of them are in the cloud. There are some in data centers such as LMAX and LB4 and um, RSX in MY4 to, to give a couple of examples, but most of them are cloud-based still. So uh, we would set you up, let you um, trial that for a couple of weeks and see how your trading strategies work and uh, see how you can take advantage of those arbitrage opportunities that are still undoubtedly out there. Um, and um, then you move to a, a regular contract after that. Um, one thing that um, we also do is uh, we can set you actually up with your VMs in the cloud providers and actually help with the, um, the, the build of those for you. Um, we are finding some people um, don't have that much experience of building trading servers in the cloud, um, understandably, because it's such a new thing. Um, we know how to do that. So we have a consultancy team that can, uh, can build those for you as well. Um, and then, um, you know, we will constantly look to improve latencies and bring other markets on as and when they are created. It's, crypto world seems fairly fluid. 
Um, some exchanges are dropping off, new ones are starting all the time. There's another new one coming up in Singapore next year. Um, so great trading opportunities still there now. Um, you may have noticed by looking at the crypto world, the arbitrage uh, opportunities are huge. The price differential between the different exchanges is, um, is pretty extreme still. So um, there's definitely um, the ability to make some money by, uh, by Arbing. Um, particularly in and out of Tokyo. So um, again, get in touch. You've got the email address there. Get in touch with us and we can explain in a lot more detail how we do that. Great. And then one last question um, in the chat. Uh, Alex, is CTP the only way to connect Chinese exchanges to vendors? Um, so CTP right now, well, I can say CTP is the major way, but it's not the only way. Because, um, as a uh, as some of you probably know, uh, if you choose to uh, trade TT on the, um, you know, on the um, overseas side, uh, TTF uh, have already uh, connected with ASANI on the um, on the domestic Chinese side, so it can also be an option to you know write into the um, exchange instead of going the uh, mainstream via CTP. So you you do get options, but CTP is still the um, major market uh, percentage here. Great. Thank you very much. We are now at time. Um, so just managed to squeeze that question in. I just wanted to say thank you so much, um, Alex and Matthew for taking us through the best practices, showcasing how BSO and Nanghua Futures can support businesses and also answering all the questions we had. Um, we will be sharing this recording. And if anyone does want to get in touch, we saw on the last slide the email addresses for both Nantua Futures and BSO. Please don't be shy, get in touch if you want to hear more about us or if you have any questions, we're always happy to help. Thank you very much to our panelists and also to our lovely audience.